Praise the Lord, beloved. You're welcome to It's Your Time. I'm Apostle Lian Kofi bringing you the word of God. Beloved, I'm so excited about today's word. Yes, I truly am. Because, you know, in the times in which we are in, there is a need for something more in order to get to the place of success. Amen. And that is why... I am led by the Spirit of God to bring this word to you, which I preached in Liberty Center of the Lord's Garden Ministries a few weeks ago. And I titled the message, Repositioning, and the subheading is The Fight of Faith. The Fight of Faith. You know, there are many things in this world and in our lives and around us that seek to challenge our faith and seek to challenge our future and our peace and every good thing that we ought to have. There are many things that fight us daily and which have the potential to stop us from being all that we have been called to be or to having all that God has already given to us. But Paul, writing to his protege, the young man Timothy, said to him that fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life whereon thou art called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. He said, fight a good fight of faith. And I said, since when did fighting become good? But the fight of faith, beloved, is a good one in the sense that if only we can stand in faith, if only we can fight the good fight of faith, we shall overcome all things and come to the place of success and victory. But you know something? Let me not preach you the message because... We're going to the Betty Center of the Lord's Garden Ministry where you get the full message. But this is just a part one. So after today, tune in again next week for the part two. But for now, let's go to the Betty Center of the Lord's Garden Ministry. You are about to be blessed. Amen. This morning, I am continuing my message. I began in the first week of January on repositioning. Amen. And um, we've had so many things going on in the past weeks. And so we haven't finished that series that I have. And so I want to continue with this. And this morning I'm ministering on repositioning the fight of faith. This is under the fight of faith. Amen. I'm reading from the first book of Timothy, chapter 6, the verse 11 to 12. Paul was writing to Timothy, who was his protege, or maybe to say he was Timothy's mentor. And he said to him, But thou, O man of God, flee these things. And follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. Fight the good fight, fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. He said uh, Timothy should fight a good fight of faith, so that he may lay hold on eternal life, because he has been called not on, only unto abundant life in this life but also unto eternal life and Paul was encouraging Timothy to fight the good fight of faith but you wonder since when did fighting become a good thing in our thoughts and in our minds when we talk about a fight you go uh, is it good to fight well the apostle was making reference to the many things that we will go through in this life the many things we have to contend with in this life in order to be able to overcome and to live victoriously and live in the abundance of God's goodness. And not only that, we are to fight the good fight of faith against the things that we want to draw us away from God and also our purpose in God. Because every one of us is born unto a purpose. Every one of us has a destiny to fulfill. And yet, even though we are going sometimes about our business, there are many things that mitigate against our peace, many things that will fight against you know, our lives. But he says that fight the good fight of faith. Amen. Fight that good fight of faith. And in my series, in talking about repositioning, I'm talking about repositioning yourself for success in life, amen, repositioning yourself for success in life. Many people have different definitions for success. Some think that maybe wealth alone is success, but you can have wealth and not have peace, and that is not success. When we talk about success, we're talking about total well-being and also fulfilling your purpose in life, amen. 
and it will come by contending against many things. And so to truly fulfill the purpose of God in our lives involves or we will need to fight a battle. Amen. Life is a battle. From the day you are born, you struggle to crawl, you struggle to walk. See a little baby trying to walk and they fall, they, they bump their bums and they hit their heads against corners. And it's a struggle even for that little baby. And then you grow and as you grow, you face many, many, many challenges. But this is a battle that is already won because Jesus has already won the battle for us. Somebody say amen. 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 And so the purpose of my message is this morning is to encourage you to stay in the fight and not give up. Because many people give up in the fight of life. But we are not to give up in the fight of life because the battles that we face in the differing forms are common to man. Bible says that whatever temptation you go to, there's nothing that is not common to man. If somebody's been through it, somebody's done it, somebody's been there, done it, has a t-shirt for it to show that they went through and they won. And so we will also face our battles in life and by the good fight of faith, overcome and win. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together for that. We will stay on course and not be derailed in our course. Neither will we miss our purpose in life. Paul said to him, but thou, O man of God, flee these things. Follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. Then he says, now fight the good fight of faith. He said, this charge I commit unto you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies that went on before thee, that thou by the prophecies may war a good warfare. He said, I'm committing to you a charge. And by reason of the prophecies, because Timothy's mother and grandmother were good Christian women, they were also in ministry, and he had had many hands laid on him, many prophets had prophesied upon him concerning his destiny and his call. And he said to him, so Paul was telling Timothy, that by the prophecies, by the words that have been spoken over your life, you will wage a good warfare. You will lay hold on the words that have been spoken to you and stand on your grounds in those words and fight a good war. Wage a good warfare so that you will not have everything and anything take you off the purpose to which God has called you. And he said to him that he must hold on to faith. So holding on to faith and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith have been made shipwreck. That means that when we cast off, when we give up, or when we go contrary to the good word of God spoken to our lives, when we don't take it by faith, what happens is that we get derailed. You see, many people start very well in life, but not all end well in life. That's what the Bible says, that better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. So no matter how successful you have begun, the true success is maintaining it, increasing it, and not coming down. Amen. And it will come by waging a good warfare. Waging a good warfare. And he said to him that he should hold faith and a good conscience. Amen. And he said, people have put away faith. And because of that, they have missed their mark, lost their way, and have become separate. So that means that it is our faith that will keep us in the midst of the battles of life. And your faith, beloved, is your weapon. It's a weapon. Your faith is a key weapon that will bring, an, bring down the onslaught of the enemy in your life. Amen. Without that faith that we have in God... That good faith, beloved God, there's bad faith and there's good faith. People have faith in bad things. People have faith in the negativities. But we don't have faith in the negatives of life, but we have faith in that saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So your faith, as I'm saying, is a weapon. It's a mighty weapon that God has given to all of us to overcome and to bring down the onslaught of the enemy in our lives. It's our faith that gives us the ability to win all the battles in life, and overcome. Praise be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. A mighty weapon. Now, when we talk about faith, it sounds such a big spiritual word, but faith simply means belief. 
what you believe. Amen. I think who, somebody said that faith, GD, in tree, GD, what you take in, what you believe is your faith. Amen. Now, Hebrews chapter 11 is a gallery or gives us a gallery of men and women who overcame great things in life. Many things. They fought many battles through faith in God and achieved victory over life and over life situations. A whole gallery of men and women that we know through the word of God. Amen. And Bible says that through faith, they, they won their battles. They overcame challenging situations. And because of that, they got the victory. And that is why their names are recorded in the word of God. Hallelujah. Now, the verse 1 of Hebrews 11 says that, Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, this sounds very, you know, off. Because how can you call something that you don't see as substance or evidence? But that is what faith is. Faith is the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things that we cannot see. Now, take this to any law court and you'll probably be thrown out. Come to give an evidence, yes, and they said, I didn't see it, but I'm here to give evidence. Can you imagine? You'll be chucked out. But that is faith. It's a substance of things hoped for. You see, when you hope for something, it means you have not yet seen it in the present, right? But it's rather in the future. You hope this will happen. You hope for this. It's futuristic. You are, you, you are seeing what is not yet manifest. All right? Now, faith, Bible says, is seeing what is not yet manifest, manifest. So, for example, to make it very simple, maybe you, let me take a simple one. Okay, maybe you have this hope that maybe next week you will win a contract. All right? It's hope. You believe that next week it will happen. But faith says, even though it hasn't gotten to next week, I believe now that I've already received the contract. That is the difference. Are you getting it? Amen. Faith is the tangibility of what we do not see. We don't see it, but we know and believe that it is because God says it is. That is what faith is. And the Bible says also in Hebrews eleven six 6, that without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that God is, and that he's a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. Without faith, he says, we cannot please God. Amen. So in order to please God and to receive, we must have faith. If you read Hebrews chapter 11, people were moved by faith to do many things. Some of it in their doing may have even seemed ridiculous. Noah, it is recorded in Hebrews chapter 11 and also Genesis, I think, chapter 8, was told by God to build an ark. And God said to him, a great rain is coming and it's going to cover all the earth and everything in the earth is going to die. But build this wooden big boat and take two of every animal, male and female, take them into the ark and then go in with your family and shut the door because a great rain is coming to destroy everything. Now, at that time, in Genesis chapter 7, you realize that it hadn't yet rained on, on the earth. It was dew that, and, and a mist, the Bible says, that covered the earth. Genesis 2, sorry. So every plant and every herb of the field was in the earth, and it was a mist that went forth, that watered them. So there had not yet been rain as we know rain. But God comes to Noah and says, listen, there's going to be plenty water coming. And then Noah begins to build this ark. And then people come and say, Father Noah, what are you doing? He said, rain is coming. It's going to rain. Water is going to fill this whole earth and flood the place. And everything in the earth is going to die. So I'm building this boat so that I and my family can be saved. So look at him. This, this old man has gone off. What are you talking about? And he was building. And as long as he was building, I'm sure... He was subjected to a lot of ridicule and a lot of scorn. And so it is when we also hold faith in God. A lot of things you might do, a lot of things in your life, so long as you hold on to faith, may seem ridiculous to the ordinary mind. But in God, we know that by faith, Noah built that ark and saved his family. Praise be to the name of the Lord. Amen. He built that ark 
as ridiculous as it looked and as unlikely as it may have seemed to him because what are you talking about? Big rain coming. But because he heard God and he obeyed God and by faith built the ark, he saved his family. Amen. Abraham also, according to Hebrews chapter 11, the verse 8, says that he obeyed God when God called him to leave his home, his father's house, to a land that he will show him. Not a specific place. And he said, I will give you this land and I will give it to you for an inheritance. And Bible says he went along with God, not knowing where he was going. There was no GPS. There were no maps at that time. So maybe the money gets up and God said, Abraham, go east. Keep on going, 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 going. And he's going. <laughs> and where is he going? People say, this man is not right. What does he mean? What, 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 what God? Who spoke to him? In fact, to even say that you heard God, sometimes people look at you funny. But he obeyed God. And by so doing, he received righteousness from God. And today, the blessing that God promised him, that he will make him a father of many nations, in blessing, he will bless him. In multiply, he will multiply him. And he said that through his generations shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Today, it's come to pass. Hallelujah. Whether Muslims or Christians, all of us point our ancestry to Abraham. Amen. As a father of faith. Amen. He believed God and by faith in him, by trust in him, left his father's house, his comfort zone. You know, faith will always, you know, kind of take you away from your comfort zone. Sometimes you are comfortable in what you are doing, where you are at, what is happening. And then God says, no, move. Where am I moving to? I'm okay here. But to get to the next level of your life, you must believe God and walk with him in faith. Hallelujah. Bible says also that Sarah, that's Abraham's wife, also, I love this one, said, through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. That portion is that which really kicks my spirit. She judged God faithful. Whenever we have faith in God or we exercise faith in God, it is because we judge God faithful. And therein is the pleasure of God that we judge him faithful. Because in many things in life, in the many battles of life, there will be the tendency to sometimes doubt, where is God? Does God really care? Is God really with me? Is there even a God? Will, will he do it? Some of us know that he can do it. But will he do it for me? Sometimes it's a big question. But Sarah had faith in God and she judged him faithful who had promised. And that is the way to win in life, to judge God faithful. You can judge everything else unfaithful, but never God. You can choose to distrust everything, but never God. You, you can choose to doubt everything, but not God. If you want to doubt anything, this morning I submit to you that doubt your doubt. Doubt your doubt and not God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. In the book of Hebrews, as I said, it's a whole catalog of people. Bible talks as people, talk about people like Rahab, who through faith in what God was about to do, was also able to bring deliverance to her home. Talks about Gideon, a man who felt he, he, of, he had no, no structure, he had nothing, he was weak. But through faith in God's word, when God said to him, I've made you a mighty man of valor, he received that faith to rise up to bring deliverance to his people, Barak, Samson, David. The list goes on and on of people who, by faith, the Bible says, subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions like Samson, quenched the fires of violence, escaped the edge of the sword out of weakness, were made strong. They were weak in themselves, but their faith made them strong. This one, I pray for you that if you have been weakened by life or if you are feeling weak in life because of the pressures of life and the different things that are coming against you, I pray this morning that by faith in God, may your strength be renewed. May your faith in God this morning tell you that it's going to be okay because I am in control. God says that I 
will help you. May your faith in God's word this morning give you strength for tomorrow. Give you strength to wake up tomorrow morning with a new zest for life. Amen. With, with, with an appetite to, to go for life and really win. Praise the Lord. That was powerful. And you know something? You are also going to judge God faithful. Yes, we are. After this word, we can't do anything else but obey the word of God and do the word of God. Sarah judged God faithful. And because she believed that he who had promised was able to deliver, she conceived even in her old age and brought forth a son. Beloved, I don't know what your issue is, but one thing I know for sure is that God knows. And one thing I know for sure is that if only you can believe, if only you can believe and trust God for that thing which you are desiring or hoping for, it shall be done unto you. We, like Sarah, believe God that God is faithful. And in his faithfulness, he won't fail you. In his faithfulness, he will not disappoint you. Your dreams shall come to pass. Your desires shall come to pass. The prophetic word over your life shall come to pass. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Wow. Tune in again next week for the second part of this message. But let me pray with you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for my beloved one. And in the name of Jesus, beloved, I pray that your faith will increase. And I pray that your faith will stand. And I pray that whatever measure of faith you have, may you put it to work. May the Spirit of God cause you to put it to work. And by your faith, I call for breakthroughs. I call for miracles. By your faith, I command mountains be leveled before you. By your faith, I command valleys be exalted. Above all, may the counsel of the Lord concerning your life stand. May God bless you, beloved, and God fulfill his promises in your life as you hold on to him in faith, knowing that he who has promised is faithful. God bless you. Now, if you have not given your life to Jesus, beloved, that is the first step into faith. Hallelujah. If only you believe that Jesus is the son of God and you believe that he came to die for your sins and you confess it, the Bible says you are saved. It is a faith thing. Hallelujah. Do you believe? Have you believed on the Son of God? Have you believed the gospel news that God sent his only begotten Son to die for you and I so that our sins may be forgiven, that we may be called the sons of God? If you have believed, pray after me and accept Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. This is the greatest thing you could ever do for yourself. Stretch forth your hands towards me. Let us pray. Say after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart that you are the son of God who came to die for my sins. Jesus, I confess I'm a sinner. Forgive me of all my sins. Come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. God bless you, beloved. If you pray that prayer, you are born again. You have become converted, but there's a need for you to be discipled. So you must find a good Bible-believing church to attend so you can be discipled. If you are anywhere near any of our branches and the branches are scrolling right now as I speak, please join us in Akosombo, in Abitifi, in Pepiase, in Pong. Join us. And in Accra, we have the prayer place of the Lord's Garden Ministry at Ashaman. And then where you meet myself, me, myself, where we meet, you and I, that is the Liberty Center of the Lord's Garden Ministry adjacent Pogas Furniture Trade Fair. La. Amen. It will be a pleasure to meet with you and a pleasure to disciple you. So if you just receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior and you are looking for a good church home, don't look any further. Come to Liberty Center of the Lord's Garden Ministry. It is a great family of great believers. God bless you. And if you are being blessed by it's your time and you want to sponsor this program, you want to be part of what the Lord is doing in this ministry, you can give your donation or love gift to the ministry. The details, the banking details and Momo numbers are coming on the screen. Be a part of this great move of God. God bless you and have a great week. And remember that the good fight of faith is one that you will never lose. Hallelujah. You never lose in the good fight of faith. It's a win, 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 win story. Have a blessed week. Amen. Thank you.